it's a new year. It's my year, but it's time to look back at last year and go through all the best robots that I've got, as is customary, as is tradition now. Hopefully you know the rules by now. I'm just going to pick 10 things that I got this year, not that just came out this year, that I like, blah, 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 blah. I don't actually know where I'm going to start, so I'm just going to go over here and pick something up randomly. In no particular order then, we're going to start with Cyberverse Deluxe Shockwave. This is one of a few things I've got on my list. Um, I just picked up randomly off eBay through the year, which is something that sort of took my fancy, uh, caught my eye and I took a punt on it and ended up like really liking it. Probably because I had no expectations for it. So it wasn't really going to disappoint me because it's quite good. It's just a really nice design. I just really like how he looks as a robot. And I'm very aware that I've only transformed him like twice because he turns into next to nothing. Um, but as a shockwave action figure um, with the pink hose going on here and it's just nice paint nice detail he's poseable and everything and he's got a he's got another gun for some reason but okay yeah that's all right um yeah it's just it's just a nice figure and I think it's made me realize that I, I do rather just like shockwave as a robot like you know that is one of the all-time best robot designs out there really isn't it so yes I like some more of him and it's a little bit disappointing there's going to be one in Earth Spark, but it's just this again, but with some different paint. Mm. Keeping it in the realm of eBay punts, um, here is Studio Series Dino. I didn't think I was going to buy this. When this came out, I looked at him and was like, oh, Dino is like nothing, you know, he's, he's no one. Never really had a proper toy before. And this still doesn't fix that because it still can't be a properly accurate Ferrari. So it was a bit like, well, what's the point? You know, he looks really weird. He's much more like an alien than any of the other movie Autobots, I think. Um, I think it's his weird feet. Anyway, this toy actually is very good. Dynamic and bold. I love the door wings up here, just adding a bit more like, I don't know, to his silhouette. And the transformation is amazing. It's got to be the, probably the best new transformation that I have tried out this year. It's mental, it's just, it's magic. All of the car just sort of folds up, Constantine is into his back and it does loads of clever stuff and it's really fun. And the car itself, while it isn't a proper Ferrari 458 Italia, it looks enough like one and it just looks like a nice red car. There you go. Um, it's, it's just good. I really like this. And to be honest, I feel like this is the standard to what I would expect from Studio Series Deluxes now. It's like, I want them to be this interesting with the whole transformation process. So I don't know, I feel like I wanted Sideways to be a bit more like this and he kind of wasn't, he's not as involved, but Hot Rod looks like he might be on the same sort of level. So maybe we'll give him a look. I don't know, Dino's all right. Let's just try to forget the fact that he's named after a Ferrari family member and can't be a Ferrari toy from Hasbro ever. Let's go a bit bigger and talk about Bulkhead now. Legacy has been a little bit odd. I think the first year was a bit sort of up and down and we had only like two waves of it for most of the year. So it felt a bit like we weren't really getting our claws on the main meat of it, of what it was going to be like and what it's sort of become now that we've got about four waves of it out there. But Bulkhead was a really strong start, I think. An awful lot of people complained about him. I'm not really a big fan of, I'm not really a fan at all, actually, of Prime. So I couldn't give a monkeys that he's not all round and, and looks like he does in the show there. Fair play to you if you're one of those people that was really annoyed by this, because I can understand it. You know, when everything else is getting like, you know, all the G1 stuff is getting super accurate updates and then they go and make Bulkhead look completely different to what you might expect him to. But that's why I like him. He's something new and fresh. And I like Knockout a lot as well. And even RC is good. I haven't got RC, I've got Road Rocket instead. But all of those new Prime ones are really good. And that Skyquake looks good too. So I'm not complaining. Bulkhead is brilliant. He's big and solid. And he just it feels like he does a lot. You know, he's got the silly little gun that he doesn't really need, but, you know, you've got the stuff on his back and the wrecking ball, and you can cover him in guns more than anyone else, really. Um, it's just a really good toy. Backtracking slightly back into Kingdom, uh, we've got Red Alert. 
I didn't think I was going to buy him either. It's just, it's another eBay punt. I saw him going for a decent price and I thought, oh yeah, go on then. And then I really, 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 really like this. I think this is probably the best version of this mold. There's a lot of them out there, isn't there? This side swipe. Um, this is, of course, the earth moded more square one i think it's better than side swipe actually I, I got the earth mode side swipe as well and this is just nice just having the extra little touches of a bit more paint the light bar on there it just looks really good and yes he might have a bit too much red for red alert you know his arms probably shouldn't be red but i like it it's pleasing it's pleasing it's just a very nice solid deluxe car man we all know this um but this one's got like it's got like metallic eyes. It's just nice. It's just nicer than all the other ones. Now we get to move into the legacy bit that I was really a very big fan of. It's the Velocitron Speedia 500 collection. And those are too many words, but it's all very good stuff. Ah, override. Yes, this is so very good. And it's even better when you find out that this whole thing was made on the budget that they were going to use to just remold and tool new parts for the studio 86 hot rod they're just going to turn that into override and stick a new head and bits on him and then they used that budget to go and tool an entirely new properly accurate amazing figure we, we're living in an age where anything is possible i never had cybertron override um and of course looking back at pictures of her now she's a strange wide very very wide creature isn't she i think what i like about this so much is that it still feels like a cybertron figure it's solid and the plastic is gorgeous and the wheels aren't just plastic clipped on bits and they're still see-through like they should be and oh the, the paint is good shiny bits and the gun does what it should and you can even stick a cyber key in there if you really really feel like you have to it's just yeah it's all there apart from like a spring-loaded gimmick you know it's just what generation should be right now please 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 the, at this point the only wish i have for this year is that we get the black and teal repaint of this select whatever wherever you've got to put it however you've got to put it out there please dark nitro convoy has become like my number one priority because that would be oh boy that would be something else just don't paint over the light piping on that one please you know that's that's the only detractor i can think of to this toy is the fact that you've got a big old block of clear red in the back of her head and they went and painted her eyes blue but you know keeping it velocitron if i'm perfectly honest most of this list could have been just stuff from the velocitron line you know we haven't even had the second wave of it yet and i could have just populated more than half of this list with just the first lot of them it's so good it's exactly what i want updates of random guys from throughout the legacy of the brand not just g1 and they're loosely, very loosely, but just enough tied together by a little bit of a story thread. They're all in a race. It's good enough for me. It's it's spot on. It's great. I love the alt mode packaging, putting them in there in cars, in the long ways box. Yes, it all feels great. Sitting at the top of that pile is Scourge. Um, Yeah, this is... That's what I wanted. It's what I wanted. As soon as that G2 laser prime is shown off, it's like, that's going to make a very nice scourge. And it did. And yes, it's not quite right. You know, the paint is a little bit different. Where everything else is hewing so accurately to its source material. This coming along and having pink windows in the chest and not having enough grey did feel like a bit of a bummer, I've got to be honest. But once I got it in my hands, it works so well. Once you actually get your peepers on it in the flesh, it's a very nice deco. You can like open his chest up and like get the light streaming through the pink windows onto the matrix under there. It just makes a nice effect and the light piping is amazing and having all the rockets in there is a really cool new touch. And yes, it's annoying that all of this pink around the edges is still there and wasn't painted grey and you can say things about the fact that he's got the upside down g2 badge on there like the car robots they're strongers is that what they were called um when really on the box this specifically says he's robots in disguise scourge and so should have 
normal Decepticon symbols on there. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit weird and off in little tiny little ways. But it's still very good. It's still Scourge. Um, this is, I think, it's basically my favourite deco. Now, whenever there's a new one of these, if it's a Nemesis Prime or a Scourge, I'm I'm there for it. Paint me a big truck man with the the red bits, or even better, the the pink is actually a bit better. Um, and all the metallic teal. Just put the metallic teal on something. I'm there, I'm throwing money at you for it, and that's what I did with this. Knowing that he's going to be the villain in the next film is a bit of a weird one, because it's like, oh yes, that's, that's spot on, look at that truck. But then he turns into a really weird looking bloke, and I don't know, I, I don't know how to feel about that scourge at the moment, um, but if you go and paint him like this, then I'll... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be throwing more money at you. Now, while Scourge was a leader that isn't actually really leader-sized at all, here is something that most definitely is. Ooh, what a big boy Studio Series Sludge is. What a nice big chunk of stuff this man is. Look at him. I know a lot of people have had problems with this. Um, you can see mine doing that. Like His, his, his legs are a bit loose going that way. Um, but everything else seems all right, apart from like... Apart from all this going on, you know, the wings don't actually stop and stay somewhere um, and flop about under his arms, but seems all right to me. There's there's nothing wrong with this, really. I didn't get Slug, I missed out on him. But at the end of the day, I think Sludge is my favourite Dinobot. Um, I don't know, he's he's just, he's got something good going for him with his looks. He's got a, he's got a good big face. He's got a good big Stubby, like, I don't know, it's like an elephant gun, did not it, basically, what he's, what he's packing there. Yeah, just the transformation is great. It's a lot more involved than you would expect, and yes, his feet probably should fold into that hole in his tummy, but the dino mode is such a, such a nice big friend-shaped chunk that, it, yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, I oh, just, I don't really want to put him down, just carry him around for a bit. I hear that Snarl is going to be the next one, and that's a bit of a laugh, really, isn't it? when he's in, like, two frames in the whole film. Let's move into some special old stuff now. This is G1 Perceptor. Very, very nice and shiny, and just such a nice toy. Like, this is definitely an all-timer, just good toy. Um, I can see why the guys at Takara like this boy. He's definitely a bit of their best work probably. This is the universe uh, reissue. So I think that makes his stickers a bit shinier than they probably ought to be, but I, I'm not complaining. I like that. Um, he's already covered in so much chrome that adding a few more sort of spots of high reflectivity to his body is no skin off my nose. Beautiful toy. I've had a good year for Perceptors. Um, so I thought, yeah, one of them needs to go on this list because I've had like three. This is where it begins and um, definitely what I would prefer, the way he looks, you know, with the sort of teal bits, even the, the face that isn't a face, you know? Give us one Perceptor toy that's new that, that looks like that. I'll be quite pleased. I've got a Magnificus order in. Maybe I'll swap his head with the Studio Series one. Maybe I'll go mad with power. Another universe toy is what, for a very good long part of the year, I thought was the best thing I picked up. And I'm looking at it now and still thinking, you know, it might might well be, might well be. Power Glide. Ultra grey power glide. That like at the time and for a long time everyone was like, nah, it's not power glide, is it, mate? Like, I don't want that. Uh, they're really easy to get now. <laughs> you know, we we've had our proper generations one in the little combined walls one that's actually red. So now all of these are just they're just around, they're on the market quite readily. Um, and I managed to get one brand new. I think it was for the, yeah, it was all sealed in his box. I think it was for the price that you would have paid back in 2008. And I'm going to say that's ludicrous because this is an amazing toy. It's exactly the kind of thing that we don't get anymore. And that seems stupid because I'm only talking about 2008. It's not like we're talking about the 80s. But you don't get all this click these days. You don't get light up noise making these days it's big and solid but also it's weird it's very strange you know like this isn't really power glide is it he's far too big and menacing he's far too military grade looking isn't he and he's got a few little bits of like what feel like 
you know, movie design chops, because of course he came out around that time. He's covered in numbers that may mean something to someone who designed the deco for him. It's just an oddity. And yes, you open up the chest and he's got a little heart in there. What a, a strange but very, very cool toy this is. I like everything it does. The articulation, the weird, weird transformation that it's got going on. The bit where you go halfway and it triggers a switch and it makes the noise and is definitely the sort of thing that I do kind of wish we could have some of now. Like imagine if there was like just a big chunky light up Rise of the Beasts Optimus, you know, and, and lights flash in his truck boobies, you know, that would be just great. But we're not going to get that because toys have to be disposable these days, don't they? I feel like there's definitely a place for this weird kind of level of classic stuff now. Now that we've had properly accurate updates of all these characters, you can go back and actually appreciate these toys for what they were and what they are as something really interesting and different. Yeah, I love Power Glide. This is great. And now let's move on to the most special thing that I've had all year that you've been able to see down here and I've not quite realised because there are on-screen graphics in the way of that. Um, yeah. Yeah, boy. G1 Metroplex. It's not a reissue. This is the original. I got him boxed. Complete. For less than a hundred quid. <laughs> 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 He's all here. All of the bits. Slammer and Scamper and all the bits for Six Gun. All the stickers. Look at this. this little bread bin that comes out of his chest there that's all shiny. What a good toy this is. You know, for a long time I have half regretted not getting the old generation's titan metroplex you know i did once see it in toys r us might not have had enough money for it then but i did actually get to see it in person and of course it's, it's the one titan that everyone wishes got another run because everyone wants a metroplex but i feel like that really hasn't got the energy at all that this original one does you know he's wide he's just a big square isn't he? He's just a man made out of big squares and tower blocks and you can see that all on him and in him and it's a brilliant design and it's such a big chunky solid thing and yes i know i've got to be careful so i don't tear him in half but he seems to be nice and stable and solid and yeah so his arms only really do that like perceptor you know it's one of those g1 things where it's just it's got so much charm and the particular chops that it has are still worthy today. City mode is great, you know, you've got a big, big long bit comes out of there, you know, extending ramp and stuff like that. And while it might not do anything as a robot, it still looks amazing just stood there, especially when you've got him on your shelf and you've got some other little shiny G1 blokes there under his feet. It's great. It's just a nice real special collection piece um even if i hadn't got him in the box with all the bits this would still be something really special so that's my top 10 for 2022 but before i go i'm very 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 aware that actually the number one favorite thing i got all year was on that list and i made the list um before christmas actually before the end of the year because i thought well nothing really is going to come along to make enough of an impact on how i view what i got through the year as a whole, I made the list and I took in considerations of what I put on lists in previous years. So, because Grapple was in my list for 2020, um, I didn't put Hauler on the list this year, because I thought, no, no, I might as well I'll leave him off and give the slot to someone else. But really, would I hold my hands up and say, this is my number one favourite figure of 2022. It's just a repaint. It's just, it's just a bright green repaint of Grapple with a screaming face, but it's the best toy I've had all year. The Lossitron Road Hauler was the real champ of the year. Just number one, tippity top. He's, he's kind of funny, bit of a meme, or stuff like that. It's very, just a brilliant toy. I just, I, <laughs> so if 11 best figures of the year isn't enough for you, I've also got to give a shout out to Legacy g -Axis. I got him for Christmas. What an amazing and like just flabbergasting, dumbfounding, stupendous thing this is. Why does it exist? How does it exist in this state? You know, the simple fact that we've got a toy at all of 
G2 Comics G Axis. There isn't some weird exclusive that's actually just mainline sitting on a toy shop shelf for everyone of the general public to see and go, how do you pronounce that name? That's mad, isn't it? 30 years after his debut, he's finally got a toy and it's this good? How is this real? How is it? How? How? Why? Who? When? And where? Opening hands and that face and the gun that he doesn't actually need that he's got one too many of. Um, and the like missile bit comes off and can go on the gun and go on the top of the jet and they painted the thrusters and he's got the little tiny bat wings on his legs. Everything is here. All the weird wires in his shins. It's all here. It's all what I suppose we've got to imagine is the best figure of G-Axis that we're ever going to get. And it just it just feels like that is exactly what they realised they were doing when they were making this. Lads, we're never going to get a better chance. You know, let, let's just do it. Let's just do the best G-Axis toy we could possibly ever do and just do it as a mainline Voyager. What? And now we're in the new year. He's like consistently on sale. So you've got no excuse. So 2022 was a bit of a weird year. They gave us some varied, varied stuff. The 2023 looks like it's going to be kind of the same. I, I, I don't know. I'm just waiting for the pictures of that Command Class Armada Optimus and I'll be set, ready. Let's get on. Let's go. It's time for that Armada stuff, boy. Yes, I'm very aware. I need to talk to you about Hotshot. Don't worry, I will be doing that. Maybe you're thinking, why isn't he on this list? And why isn't Starscream on this list? And it's because, well, actually, they're not that good. They're just, there's something missing about them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Brad kind of summed it up in his top seven. <laughs> With Starscream, it's just, there's something missing. That's just, yeah, it's not quite there. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I, I feel that way as well. So, yeah, I don't know. It's nice that we're getting the stuff, don't get me wrong, but it could still be just a little bit better, just a little bit more finished, you know? Especially when you compare it to stuff like this, it's not in the same league. But I have every faith that it will still be good and there will still be more of it. There was an interview with um, Mark and Evan from the design team and Evan was like, oh, Armada got me back into things. So I'm like, yes, yes, someone understands. Someone out there in that little Hasbro enclave knows what is good. So I'm feeling good for 2023 and I hope you are too and I'll see you very soon. <laughs>